Welcome back, everybody. Sing along with me. It's the final countdown. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, I didn't just violate some copyright law and get my video banned off of YouTube, but you're welcome for that song. If you need to look it up, it's, it's the final countdown. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. But this is it. This is our final video together. I'm going to be going over your final requirements for the final projects that are looming ahead. So we've got a few weeks left and you've got about a handful of assignments to go through. Um, you've got your dollhouse and your uh, rendering for your base plan. What I'm really focusing on in this lecture though is how to wrap up your um, client final boards and the booklet that you're creating for them as well as your portfolio from this class and then a board for this class as well. So hang in there with me while we go over the final requirements that are ahead of you. Um, again, I think it's easier to see the final project than to read through it, but really in a nutshell, what everybody will be doing is creating a space for a client and that client and that space is completely up to you. It can be interior, it can be exterior, um, it could be residential, it could be commercial, but what we're really looking for is bringing in materials and objects to create kind of a, a cohesive room. One thing that's different about the final is that I'm not giving you a room. So this first example here, it's a room that they've created using like forced perspective lines, but it could just really be a collaged idea, and you'll see a little bit more of that. So overall, you will be creating the room for your client. And then in addition to that, so this is part one, this is the board. So you're gonna make a board for your client. And then in addition to that, you're essentially going to be taking that board and putting it into a booklet. So the cover of your booklet is almost always, you know, your board. And then within that booklet, what you're going to do is give your client some options for that space because almost always when you're designing for a client, some things might be out of stock, they might be too expensive. So here's the sofa with all of the requirements and then there's a couple more options within the booklet. So that's what I'm looking for. For each thing that you specify for your client, give them some options. Again, it could be that it's sold out, it's too expensive. Um, options are always good. They might just not like what you picked. So give some options as well. And this will cover the booklet portion of it. Let me give you guys a couple more examples here as well. Here's another student that kind of created um, a room just using some forced perspective. They created a cafe. And then from this cafe, the student went through and made a booklet as well. So this is a page layout. What I showed you previously was the spread so I could see it open, but this is what it looks like when it's just a page layout. So we've got the chair with two alternatives, you know, the bar stool with a couple alternatives as well. And that's what I'm looking for. We will be going over how to insert page numbers as well. And then let me show you guys a couple other options. Um, so here's another space that was created with alternatives as well. This one looks more like a, just a, a list of everything, but this works as well. And then we had somebody else do a bedroom. They included, um, you know, different layout. So even here you can see they, they're not using a room, they're just kind of taking all the pieces and collaging it together to make that space. And then they use you know, the same cover for the booklet. Let's ignore that the page numbers are huge, right? But good options there. And then here's one more where this was their board and then they came in. This is a spread layout. You can see it makes it a lot easier to read because I can see how it was meant to be laid out side by side. Really simple and straightforward. So that's what I'm looking for for the final. And what we're going to do here in just a minute is hop into InDesign and I'll show you 
how to, um, you know, reaffirm how to create those book layouts. We'll go over board layouts and utilize something called master pages. So after this, I'll go ahead and meet you guys back in InDesign. All right, let's just jump right in. So let's start with your design board. And I really think that this is going to be straightforward for everybody. Um, what you'll do is you will do the actual um, graphic work. So all of your masking and the room layout and Photoshop. And then once you have that image done, what you'll do is pull it into InDesign and create a new document that's a board. And for the board, it can really be as big as you want and whatever format you want, as long as it's larger than 11 by 17. Over here, I put 24 by 36 or 11 by 17. If you've worked in Revit, another common size is a 30 by 42. You might want to do a square. Really, I'm just looking for a large size. And then on that board, I want you to include the title and the theme the designer information so that's you and then all of these things you know the three or four furniture pieces the accent pieces and the finishes that will be all of the work that you do in Photoshop um, to pull everything in so let's go ahead and hop into InDesign and I'm going to quickly show you how you can lay out a board before moving back into the booklet okay so in InDesign if we go to create new when you go to print documents, there could be some large documents already available for you. So let me just go to print. Let's see the largest they have. So the largest they have is the 11 by 17. And as I mentioned, that's kind of the minimum size for a board. Now we won't be printing these. I typically just take these in a digital format. But if you were to print these for a presentation, um, we do have a large format printer on campus, uh, both in our computer labs that you can use for free. And then there's also a really good inexpensive printing on campus at the print shop. Um, so those are a couple options for you. Uh, again, we're not printing these, but if you were to utilize this in future projects that you did need to physically print out, those are some options. So coming over here, I'm going to go for the um, 36 by 24. So 36 inches wide by 24 high. And I don't want these to be a booklet layout. I just want them to be single pages. So after I've got this information in, I can go ahead and click on Create. And I've got this large board here. Now just a quick review. Let's say you created it and you're glasses aren't showing you like okay 36 by 24 if you just if you want to quickly look you can see there's 36 by 24 or if you want to change it remember you can come up to file document setup and then you can change the size right here let's say you wanted to go a little bit larger like the 30 by 42 or if you wanted to scale it down you could change the numbers here and it would be reflected there okay so again that's um, file, document setup, if you want to do some edits. And again, if you go to pages, you can see that I've got one board here. But if I hit the plus sign, if you wanted to do a two board layout, you may also do that. It's totally up to you. And on this board, remember, we've already um, hypothetically gone through in Photoshop and created that image. So you could create a frame where you wanted that image to go, and then you could place that image on here. So if I hit Control D, um, here's just one of the files that I used last time, Mean Trick, open. So you can see that this is as big as this file is. I don't want to make this image any bigger. So if I look at properties, yep, this is it at 100%. So... Under properties, I can also do um, fit frame to content. That's as big as it gets. So if you have this much white space, please consider bringing in other pieces, maybe shrinking the size of your board a little bit. Um, and I know I don't have like my, um, my name, designer info, anything like that on there, but this is still a significant amount of space. 
good rule of thumb is that the largest, most prominent thing on your board should be your work, which would be this rendering right here. You don't want your name to overwhelm it. You don't want the title to overwhelm it. You want those things to complement your work. Um, so that would be it as far as your board goes. I think most of the work will be one, creating the image for your board, and then two, creating all of the graphics that will be going into the booklet that we'll cover in this next, um, this next part coming up here in just a moment. So for this next part, I'm going to start a new document for my booklet, and we'll get started on how to insert page numbers as well as utilize something called master pages. I wanted to reiterate that we're not printing anything for the booklet, but you can print booklets in the future, you know, whether it's your own portfolio or you start using InDesign to do photo book layouts. I wanted to quickly show you just a few companies that offer photo book printing. Shutterfly is really popular. Um, here's some pricing and some sizes. Um, Costco also does it. Here's some price, well, some sizing, not a lot of pricing. Chatbooks is a really common option. Here's some sizing. My favorite is a place called Blurb. They've got lots of different sizes. They also do something really cool called a magazine. You pay a lot more to ship it than you do to make it, but you can combine with like other friends or you can make a whole bunch at the same time. But the point I'm trying to make here is that for the um, client booklet that you're making, you get to pick the size. So why don't you guys do some research on, you know, how much it costs to print these things, what the sizes are, and really come up with like a custom layout for yourself that you might actually want to use in the future for your own either schoolwork or maybe just a personal project. So I'll start by doing, um, I'll do this 10 by 8 just so it's a little bit more unique. And actually, no, I'll make it even more unique. I'll do a 7 by 7 I'm going to go for a small square. But really, do some research. This is like a drop in the bucket of the um, content that's available. So I'm going to start a new document now. So file, new document. And then just like before, I'm going to be putting in the, the dimensions because I don't think the print presets have a 7x7. Seven seven. Let's see. Nope. Not close. So I'm going to do a 7x7. Seven seven. And since it's square, the orientation doesn't matter. And I do want facing pages again because I am creating a booklet. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create. So here's my booklet that I've created. And again, I'm going to be bouncing back and forth between the properties and the pages menu. You can do it here and here, but they've made it so that just about everything you need lives right here within these two menus. I really don't have to open up a ton more anymore. And I'm just going to shrink it down a little bit. And under my pages menu, I'm just going to add a few more pages to my booklet to kind of walk through what you'll need. And I might even go back to some of the examples to kind of help you see. So let's hop back up here. Maddie's is a great example. So the first page is always the cover, right? Um, and then once you skip down, you can, if you're not getting it printed, you could immediately go to like an about me or a content uh sorry, an about me or a contact page, and then a table of contents. And then after that, you can get right into your work. Um, over here, we've got, let me go back up, we've got the cover. Actually, no, I'm looking for, yeah, let's go spread layout. So here, again, we've got the cover, about me, contents, and then we go right into the sofa options. So think about that as you're laying it out, you know, um, how you want your content to present itself as if it was a book and you're opening it up. So page one could be the cover. You could leave, you know, the back of the cover blank. Some people don't print on the back of the cover. And you might be able to do your about me or contents just right here on this third page and then get started into your furniture. You might even want to put a blank page after. It's really up to you how you want to design it and how you want your pages to be laid out for this. So in building this or um, any other layout, one unique thing that I want to use today is something called master pages. 
And master pages are great because it's a way of making your layouts consistent. So for example, coming over here, you can see the titles, um, this background, the images, everything is in the exact same place over and over again. And it's not necessarily a matter of like copying and pasting, but it's really a matter of creating something called a master page that you apply to all of your pages. So let me hop into um, how to create a master page and how to apply it to the pages within your document. Okay, so up until this point, our very brief experience with InDesign has been in the Pages menu. And now we're going to hop into the Master Pages, which are up here. Now last week during our lecture, what uh, we did was we worked down here. And we also found this kind of um, light gray line and pulled this down so we could really see our masters. Go ahead and do that if you haven't yet because we really want to make a distinction between these two because you don't want to work in masters thinking you're in pages and vice versa. It's really important to keep those things separate in your mind and also in the program. With master pages, it's really similar to pages up here. You can create one master page layout or several master page layouts. Typically in a small document like what we're doing, you only need one. But if you're working on something like a photo book, you might want a little bit of variation. So you could create, you know, like even two or three. It's up to you. But for this example, we're only going to be creating one to keep it really simple and straightforward. In this case, I'm going to be making two different examples. One that's basically symmetrical, like so symmetrical meaning that the same content will be on either side of the page. And then I'll make one that's more of like a complementary setup as well. So let's start with the first one, which is going to be the one that's symmetrical. So anything that goes on my right side will also be going on my left side. And for a master page, it's just as simple as putting in placeholders for all of your content. So I'm going to put a text frame here, and it's kind of a weird size. Um, if I look at my properties, it's four and, you know, 4.34 inches. I'm going to make this four and a half by four and a half. I think that looks pretty good. And in fact, I want to center that. Hopefully that gives me enough room to put in all of the information. So if I look down here, that might not be enough room for all of the info. So let me shrink it down a bit. Okay, so this is just a placeholder for where my images will go. Now what I'd like to do now is put like a title up here. Um, so a text frame will go up here and then a text frame will go down there. When you're creating the text frames, it's important that you have like your font, everything picked out so that you don't have to do any formatting after this. So I can put in some placeholder text like this is the title, or not title, I'll say this is the name of the piece. So this could be like sofa or something like that. And what I want to do is center this. And I don't want it floating so high above um, my image frame. So what I'll do with this is, um, oh, I'll have to do that a little bit later. Let me change the character first. So I'm a big century gothic fan so I'll go ahead and keep century gothic and I'll make it a little bit bigger 12 points usually pretty good but I'll go with 14 just because it is a title and then I'm gonna hit escape to deselect that and just grab the frame because once I grab the frame I think one thing that will help me is down here at the bottom under text frame options I want to align this to the bottom, so down here under vertical justification. I like that because then I can see how it really like lines up with the top of the um, image frame. And now that I look at this, you know, if I go to like a print preview, this is actually pretty far down. So even though the image is centered, I think it might look better if I bump it up just a little bit. 
Yeah, I think that I like that a little bit more. So even if this goes on to two lines, I've still got like a healthy amount of space down here. If you want to add, you know, a different font, um, background images, make it fancier, that's totally up to you. Um, I like it simple, so I'm going to keep it simple for now. And what I'm going to do is essentially copy this text frame down, so really similar to Photoshop. If you take a look at my cursor, you can see if I hit Alt, there's that double-headed arrow. I drag it down. And then this will be a little bit different because now this is where I come in and put all of like the manufacturer info. Now, between you and I, with the manufacturer info, I am not going to check if this is a piece that's actually available. You can make stuff up um, because sometimes you might find an image that you don't you, you haven't found the actual piece to purchase yet. So you can put like not available, but what we're going to do is to actually put placeholders there. So just to remind me, let's see what those, so usually you can put like a quick description or like the actual name of the piece. We've got the price and the dimensions. So I'll do that. I'll put um, catalog name. I could put price, dimensions, and here I'm actually going to put catalog number, if available. Usually the price and the dimensions are the most important, so I might put those first. Um, you could even put like manufacturer. I'll put that one first. So if it's like a West Elm coffee table, you could put like West Elm and then catalog number. Um, and I think that should cover it. You could even, if you wanted to, you don't have to center it. You could even come back and left justify this if you wanted to. I don't think you would right justify it, but left justify is okay. And I know that some people even add bullets to this, but I don't think it's necessary. If you do put bullets, please make sure that it's right justified. I think it looks, sorry, left justified. It looks a lot better when it's left justified. So really it could be as simple as this. Um, and this is where our image will go. We can leave that blank. If you think that you want to have like a frame around all of your images, so let's do like a solid five. And remember, I do like to change the position of this to go to the outside or the inside. Just pick one. I usually don't like it in the center. But now we've got an actual frame for our image, if that's what you like. You can add one of those as well. Um, and the things, again, that I didn't go over, if you wanted to add an entire color in the background, you can. If you want to add an entire image in the background, you can. But for now, I'm going to grab all of this information. Let's call it good. So I just drew a box, so I clicked and dragged to grab everything here. And then if I hold the Alt key down again, I can drag this over. And I'm just looking for those guidelines. There it is. And then I let go, and it just puts it in place right there. So that's the most simple example. Um, the only thing that's missing from here that I would like to also add are our um, page numbers. We don't have page numbers in here yet. And you can add page numbers on a regular page or a master layout, either one. Just to remind you, I am still working in the master layout. Let's ignore what's going on down here for just a moment, but I am in the master layout. So to insert a page number, you would come up uh, first, you actually have to draw a text box. So if I uh, just do F for frame, you could even do T, either one. And then if I click T in here, it turns it into that. So you have to have a text box with a cursor that's ready to go or text that's ready to go. And you can go up to, um, let's see, where are we? I think it's under type. Insert special character. Symbols. Nope, I'll get there one day, sorry. Markers, <laughs> current page number. So type, 
insert special character markers current page number okay and then once you do that you get not a page number but a letter and the reason why you get a letter is because that letter is a placeholder for the page numbers down here because these master pages aren't actually part of your document these are your actual documents so once we scroll down here you'll see that there's a tiny two here there's a tiny four you can see it's already generating it but these aren't actually part of the document we're not done though this is really odd um, formatting you want your page numbers to match what's going on over here so there's a handy little trick where if you highlight your text you can come here to the eyedropper tool and match it to something that's already here so if I click on this text you can see that it centered it and it changed the size. So if I hit escape, it'll deselect it. But that's a really nice, quick, easy way to at least change the text formatting. We're not done though. This still looks a little bit odd. Um, first, I actually want to anchor it to the bottom. So I'm gonna hop back into my properties and then under text frame, go back into your options and we're gonna align this to the bottom. And then I also want to make this left justified on this side. I'm just gonna shrink this text box down a little bit. And as always, I know I'm flying through this. I do this a lot, but I want you to be able to just watch it and then try it on your own. Rewind, pause, slow down the speed, whatever you need to do. What we want to do is duplicate this to the other side because we have a page number here, but we don't have a page number there. So hold down our favorite key, the Alt key, drag it on over and place it. We're not quite done. We've left justified this number, so now we want to take this one and right justify it. That'll make it nice and symmetrical. Can you guys, you know, feel my OCD flaring up? Left justify, right justify, keep everything symmetrical. So now we've got our first master page spread completed up here. And because InDesign by default puts that master page spread on everything to like by default. So now I've double clicked on these pages here. Even my cover has this, you know, even my first few pages that will be my table of contents and about me also have it. This is really easy to fix. You will see that there's always a none master page, it's just basically a blank page, just drag and drop that on top of your pages. Really simple, okay? And then let's say you have a blank page, like pages two and three, that you want to bring this onto. One thing that makes it a lot easier to drag it, because right now, let me just practice, yeah. Right now it's just one page at a time. If you just were to grab one and drag it, what you can do is hold the shift key down to grab both. So click on one, hold shift, grab the other, and then drag it down and drop it on where it says pages two and three. And that should apply it on both. That didn't quite do it. Let me try that one more time. I want to make it so it goes on both pages. Yep, here, this is so subtle. Let's see if it even works. I hope it's still not working. I'm just gonna stay here and make it work because it should. You guys might have an easier time of this than me. Maybe. Thank you version 2020 for changing the way that I used to do things. There we go. Man, that was a pain. But we love you anyway in design. So I'm grabbing both. It is so subtle. So this one is a fist to the right. This one is a fist to the left. If you drag it down just slightly below, you will see just a fist. We want just the fist, so rock on in design, and then boom, it'll apply it onto those two pages right there. That's what we're looking for. Um, so that's how you can insert uh, the master pages onto a spread if you need to do that. Now I also promised that I would do another layout that's not symmetrical, and this one's really simple too. I'm gonna go back to my master. So always pay attention to where you are. This is definitely my master, it's highlighted blue, and you can see that there are no pages above and below. If I were here, 
I can see that this is blue and I have pages before and after. So just make sure that you're careful about where you're at. And the thing that's great about this is instead of starting from scratch, I'm selecting both pages again by hitting shift and I can either right click and go to duplicate or just like Photoshop, I can come down here and go to the plus sign to add new pages and it duplicates it for me and it's called master B. And so here, what you can do, something that I've also seen students do, is they put their main piece here on the right side. And then over here, I'm going to uh, move some of these. This is where you can put some alternates. So you can actually come and I'm going to shrink this down quite a bit. I'm going to make this half the size, so maybe like two inches. I'm not sure where. Maybe you can put two or even four alternates over on this side of your layout. Actually, I'm going to keep that the same height. We'll keep those centered. I'll bring my price and dimensions here. But let us justify. Oh, I have to highlight everything. I always forget to do that. And again, our quick guides are great to make sure everything's lined up on the top. And then what I can do is I can grab all of these and do another alt. So there's one piece with two alternates right next to it. And then if I go to my pages, right, I can come here and start dragging and dropping these onto my pages. So if I wanted pages four and five to be this layout here, Let's look for that fist that doesn't have an arrow. Well, that just dragged him here. Well, now we're going to move him back up. There you go. So there's, there's a little bit of toggling that I had to do. But it was really simple, just kind of drag and drops that you'll have to play with a little bit. Um, I think overall, it's straightforward. It's not hard. Yes, it's tedious. But again, it's really not hard. Um, so what we've done so far, again, as a recap, we created a unique page size, we created master pages, and we inserted page numbers that you can see reflected here as well. Now what we need to do is learn how to actually work within these frames because when I'm on my spread layout, not in the master layout, I can't do anything with these. They're locked. Um, and InDesign does that by default so that, you know, it's tied to the master. But here's what's great. So if I need to edit anything in here, what I need to do is click Alt, uh, or sorry, Command, Shift, and click, and it unlocks it. So if you are on a PC, to change the name of this piece, Control, Shift, click, and you can see it unlocks it. And then here, I can put sofa. I was going to add something else, but I don't need to add anything else. And then here I can add an image. So I just went to control D to place. And here's one thing that's new that Photoshop, or sorry, InDesign just started doing. Let me insert an image here too. So I've got all my images in there. If I happen to change the master, they're still linked. So there are a few things that change and a few things that don't change. Let's test it out in 2020. So if I change this font, let's see if that's a thing that change or doesn't change. Let's say I want this bigger. I want it 20 and I want it bold. And I decided that I wanted to move it up here. Okay, let's go take a look at what happened to my unlocked master. Okay. Can you see that it moved up, but the font didn't change? So I think because I already broke it and I changed the text, um, it moved the location, but it didn't do the font. Let me do that one more time. So coming, so while I'm here, check out where this is, okay? And then check out where this is. I'm gonna move both of these in the master layout. So I'm also gonna move this up, and then I'm gonna take this and move it in the middle. Let's make it really obvious. So yeah, you can see that it changes the location, but not the font. Now, don't fret too much. Remember, we've got that quick trick. 
you highlight your text, go to your eyedropper, and then in here, you just click on the right one. This is a lot of back and forth. I lied, it didn't work. Oh, there it did. I, once I highlighted it, it worked. Um, but you can use that eyedropper to help you get those where you want them to go. And the thing that's great is, um, you know, outside of the text, if you make some changes to your layout, you don't have to go through and manually fix all the things that you've unlocked. You know, you can do it once and be done. The other thing that's great about this is if you decide this is like, oh, this is too plain for me, I want to add like a background or something, you can still do that. So if I come here, I can add a colored frame, okay? And we need to send this to the back. This will be the first time we talk about this. If you right click, you can go to arrange and then send to back or backward. You know, that sends it back step by step, but you can just send that to the back. And now you can see that it also applied it here. And I can be less lazy. Let me clean this up a little bit so it's really tight to the page. I just kind of freehanded it. Okay, you can do that. You can also like add a logo. And the best thing about, you know, the master layout, again, it changes it on every single page instead of just one page. So spend a lot of time making your spread, your master layout spreads first so that you don't have to do a lot of changes after. Because once you get these done, it's really just a matter of plugging it in and playing after that. So we're just about done here. I have one more thing that I want to show you. So come back when you have, you know, all of your work done. And the last thing that I will show you guys is how to package it. And in fact, I might just throw that into next week. Okay, so that's it for uh, doing a um, master page layout on any kind of a document. In this case, it was a booklet or a portfolio if you want to utilize it in the future. Um, one thing that I didn't integrate from our last lecture is how to even put grids and guides on your layout, but you can do that as well. So take advantage of this. It's a wonderful program. It works seamlessly with Photoshop. I really hope you guys enjoy it and I can't wait to see what you come up with. Thanks all.